we're going to talk about solving another form of first order differential equations. Those are equations that are in the following form. An exact equation is in the form some function m, which is a function of x and y, dx, plus some function n, which is also a function of x and y, dy, equal to zero. Again, this is going to be in some region r of the xy plane. This method will only work if the left-hand side is what's called an exact differential. The criteria for an exact differential is if the partial derivative of m with respect to y is equal to the partial differential of n with respect to x. Now, if you haven't had multivariable calculus, you're not going to know how to do a partial derivative. So let me go ahead and do a quick example. We're going to talk about some function of x and y, and we want that to equal a constant, because if the function f is a constant, its first derivative will be equal to zero. And this z I'm introducing is simply equal to the, the partial derivative of f with respect to x times dx plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y dy. So this is now a function of two variables, x and y. So let's look at this function. Sum f of x and y is equal to a constant, which is equal to x squared minus 5xy plus y cubed. If I take this f of xy and I want to find the partial of f with respect to x, I'm going to treat y like it's a constant. So if I take this first term, well, that's just going to be 2x. That's just a regular derivative. Now if I look at the second term, negative 5xy, if I take the first derivative of that with respect to x, treating y as a constant, I'm going to get negative 5y. And that y cubed, well, that's a constant, so its first root derivative with respect to x would just be 0. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is simply 2x minus 5y. If I took this partial with respect to y, this time the first term goes to 0. I still get a negative 5, but now I'm going to have an x, because now, again, it's the x I'm treating as a constant. And then I'll have 3y squared. So that's a very quick introduction on how to do partial derivatives. I'm not going to go over the proof of why we're going to be able to solve differentials with this method and why this definition holds, but it is in your textbook if you want to look at that. Instead, let's go ahead and look at an example. Here is a first order differential equation, and let's see if it matches the right form. We're looking for some function of x and y times dx plus some function of x and y times dy equaling zero. And it looks like this holds. It looks like m is going to be equal to 2xy, and n is going to be equal to x squared minus 1. So now we're going to have to do our test to see if this meets the criteria. Remember, for this to be an exact differential, the partial of m with respect to y has to equal the partial of n with respect to x. So let's go ahead and check this out. The partial derivative of m with respect to y, well, I believe that's equal to 2x. Remember, we're treating y like a constant. And when I'm looking at n, I want to do the partial derivative of n with respect to x, and that looks like it's just equal to 2x. So it looks like this is, in fact, an exact differential. So why am I doing this again? If this is true, and it is an exact differential, then there is some function f of x of y that this differential equation corresponds to. So how do we find this function f of x, y? Well, first of all, remember I said that this dz was equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x dx plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y dy. We also wanted this to equal zero. That is, we wanted the function f of x, y to be a constant, so its derivative would be equal to zero. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this df dx equal what I've called m of x and y, and this factor, the function n of x and y. So now what? Well, if I want to find this function f, but I know that its first derivative with respect to f equaled 2xy. Again, that's what I found up here. That's what m of xy is. I can simply integrate both sides with respect to x, and I'll find that f of xy is equal to 2 over 2 x squared y plus some function g of y. Normally we'd have a plus c here, but because this is a function of two variables, not only is there a constant in there, but there could also be something in relation, there could also be something in terms of y. Simplifying this a little bit, we have this being our function. Well now to find out that g of y, I'm going to use that function n. So I have my f of x. So I want to look at the derivative of f with respect to y. I know that's going to equal my x squared minus 1. So let's take this f of x here and take its first derivative with respect to y and set it equal to this x squared minus 1. I believe this first term here is simply going to be x squared. Remember, I'm taking this with respect to y, so x squared is dealt with as a constant. And then whatever the first derivative of g of y would be. And I don't know what that is because I don't know what the function is. So if I set these equal to each other, I can see pretty quickly that g prime of y is equal to the number negative 1. And if I integrate both sides, I would find that g of y is simply equal to negative y. And I'm going to go back and change that because that should have been a dy, not a dx. So I go back up to my f of x, and I say f of x is equal to x squared y plus whatever g of y is. Well, g of y is negative y, and that whole thing I said was equal to c. That is, that function f of x, y was equal to c. We're solving a particular type of differential equation, one that is in the form of m of a function of x and y dx plus n, which is a function of x and y dy, equaling 0. And we're assuming that the, some function f of x, y equals a constant, and that means its first derivative would be equal to 0. So this isn't going to solve all situations, but it does help us solve when we have a differential equation in this form and we know that it's exact because the partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. Let's look at another example. Okay, this one looks much mess messier. So this isn't one I would want to try with, say, separation of variables. I bet I can't. This is not one that I would like to try to use my integration factor for, because remember, for that, we'd have to have a linear equation and get it in a certain form. This looks like nothing we've been able to solve before. But if I can say that this is m of x right here, and this is n of x, y, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I should have said m of x and y, and n of x and y. If I can say that the partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x, I'm going to be able to solve this pretty easily. So let's look at that. The partial of m with respect to y I think this first term is 2e to the 2y, and then my second term, the y cosine xy, I think that works out to be minus cosine xy plus a y, and that's a plus because the cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I have a negative that makes it a positive, and then I'll have an xy here, and I'm going to then have an extra x there when I do the chain rule. All right, so that's the partial of m with respect to y. Now let's look at the partial of m n with respect to x and see what we get. This first term, I think I just have 2e to the 2y. The second term I have, let's see, first cosine xy, and then I'd have, again, I'll end up with a positive x 
sine xy, and then I'll have an extra y in front. And it certainly looks like these two are in fact equal. So this is an exact differential. So that means I can say m of x and y is equal to the partial of f with respect to x, and n is equal to the partial of f with respect to y. And this time, just to be different, I'm going to start with the n. I could do, the last time I started with the m and differentiated with respect to x, this time I'm going to start with the n and differentiate with respect to y. It doesn't matter which direction I go. So I'm saying the partial of f with respect to y is equal to n of x, which is, and now that I'm writing that out, I realize I didn't specifically talk about this 2y when I was looking at the partial of n with respect to x. To be complete, I'll put in a plus 0 there, because of course 2y with respect to x is just a constant, so that's equal to 0. Alright, so if I want to find what f of x is, I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to y. And let's break this out. Notice I'm pulling the x out. Remember, I'm still dealing with now partial integration. So in terms of dy, x, x is a constant. And when I have all that, I end up with x e to the 2y minus sine xy. Remember when I'm taking the uh, integration of the cosine xy, the x will come out as 1 over x, and then I'll divide out the x out front. That's why I'm just left with the sine of xy plus y squared. And now instead of a g of y, I'm going to call this h of x. That is, I'm going to have some function of x that didn't come out when I integrated with respect to y. But now, of course, I need to find what h of x is, because this is f of xy. Almost. We need to solve for that bit there. So what I'll do is, again, the partial with re of f with respect to x, this was equal to m of xy, which is just equal to e to the 2y minus y cosine xy. Now I'm going to take this f of xy that I just found and take its first derivative with respect to x so I can set these equal to each other. When I do that, I get e to the 2y minus cosine xy. Then I'll have an extra y out front. The y squared term goes to 0. And then I have whatever the first derivative of h is with respect to to x. So when I solve for h of x prime, it looks like h prime of x is just equal to 0, which means the function h of x is just equal to some constant c. So if I plug that in for h of x, I end up with my function, or the solution to my differential equation, being x e to the 2y minus sine xy plus y squared plus c, and we're going to set that equal to 0. Now, remember I did say f of xy is equal to some constant c, but if I had a c1 here and a c2 here, it could combine into one giant constant. So we're going to skip all that, and we're just going to say c and set that all equal to 0. So that was a pretty complex differential equation that we solved in this manner, and it really wasn't that hard. There's so, some more examples in the textbook. In particular, I want you to look at an IVP problem that is an initial value problem, and that's where we solve for c. You're given an initial value, and using that initial value where x will be something and y will be equal to something, you'll be able to solve for a specific solution by finding the appropriate c.